This is John Burkhart, and I would like to welcome everybody to our webinar about measuring success. And uh, we are going to talk about um, how to do uh, monitoring and, and how to do performance reporting and measuring today. So we, we would like to uh, start off with introductions from uh, our project team, and then we're going to ask for introductions from our grantees in, in the ACL planning process. And so um, if the project and I have Charlie Dixon here. Charlie? Hi, everybody. It's Charlie Dixon with the Community Transportation Association. Good to talk to you again. Hi, it's David Bernstein from West End. Nice to talk to everybody again. Glad you're all here. Virginia, you're with us. Hi, yes, I'm joining by phone today and uh, glad to be on the phone with everybody. And uh, Lynn Winchester is also on the phone. Great, great, thank you. Uh, Eric, you're with us, correct? Yes, I'm here, yes. Good. Do we to make a few remarks now or should I wait a minute? Um, Eric, why don't you go ahead and, and talk about ACL and what ACL would like to see as a result of this program? Great, and I'll be very I'll be very brief because I know that you have a, a good presentation planned. Um, well, again, thank you for uh, working on this project for all those on the call. And I was on, I was on the call about two weeks ago, so if you were on that call, um, the um, the kickoff call. Um, just uh, just welcome again, and, and thanks for your work. And I just really had two sort of broad points to make. Um, and, and, that, and the first one really is that the measures um, that, we're, that we're working with Westat on, uh, on the project um, to support the project, the, really the focus for us and what we're, we are most concerned at, about is how you're including people with disabilities and older adults um, in, in the way you design transit services uh, in, in your community um, and, and how that really affects their quality of life. So as far as a, an overarching, um, you know, what we hope to get out of this, this project, that, that is the, the main thing. And, and, and how can we um, take what all of you have learned through this, through this work um, the, and, and um, uh, disseminate that to to the rest of the country and people that want to to do uh, more inclusive work. And the second uh, point that um, is important to me is that at the at the local level, that the measures that you um, decide upon are important to you. So if if you're we don't want to ask um, for things that 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 we are curious about. Um, you know, we're, we're at the national level, we want to look at the project and try to, um, um, you know, get information that's helpful for us as we talk to, to decision makers about about uh, transportation planning and and getting the, the services to people who need. Them. Um, but really, the measures. What, what's important to you? Um, so we we hope that you use the expertise of Westat. Um, to design your your the measures that you want to to um, to take uh, to to advance your 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 work at the local level uh, and your planning and how this helps um, you learn how to how to uh, best run your your um, your agency and your work. So on behalf of ACL, just thanks again. Um, I'm going to ask Susan Jenkins on the line also, and I don't know if she has anything to add um, um, to that or not. I don't want to put her on the spot, so I'll, I'll, I'll just, I think I'll end here, and uh, th thanks, uh, John and David, for the chance to, uh, to add that. Hmm. Sure. Uh, well, we'll go ahead. Susan, I think, is having technical difficulties. We're trying to address that right now, Eric. She, okay, great. She did not hear you introduce her <laughs> because she can't hear anything on the phone line, and uh, Heidi, who is here to assist us with the call, is sending her directions for how to fix that. Okay. Let me just ask if, if we have uh, Judy Shanley on the phone. Judy, are you with us at the moment? Do, do not seem to uh, to have it. Um, I, I think what we 
I'd like to do is is we'll do a, a roll call first, and and then we'll try to get back to Susan from ACL. Um, Charlie, you want to do a roll call? Sure. Hi, everybody. It's Charlie Dixon again, and uh, just as we did uh, on our last call, I'm just going to call out uh, the names of the organizations, the projects, and when you hear your project name called, if you could just uh, introduce yourself uh, and uh, tell us where you're from, uh, that would be great. And I see that there are some folks that are having issues, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, Community Action Commission of Fayette County. Toledo Metropolitan Area Council of Governments. Can you hear us? Yep. Okay. It's um, Colette Cordova with the Area Office on Aging, and Diane Reamer Evans is here as well. It's, we're both here together. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Area Agency on Aging 1B. Hello, this is Roberta Habowski with the Area Agency on Aging 1B. Um, we incorporate the county surrounding Wayne County, which Detroit is in. All righty, thank you. Uh, Knoxville, Knox County Community Action Committee. Hi, I'm Karen Estes and Warren Seacrest, and Eric Arnett's on a separate line, and we're from Knoxville, Tennessee. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Ride Connection. Hi, this is Ross Peterson. Uh, I also have Julie Wilkie and Elaine Wells on the line, and we're here from Portland, Oregon. Thank you so much. Uh, Lewis and Clark County. Uh, Laura Erickson and Steve Larson from Helena, Montana. All right, thank you. Uh, Montgomery County, Maryland. Elaine Binder from Montgomery County, Maryland, which is right outside of Washington, D.C. Thank you. Did you hear me? Uh, yep, we can. Thank you. The AAA of Tarrant County. Moving on. Uh, live stream services. Hi, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Hi, uh, this is Jim Alba with Livestream Services. Uh, we serve East Central Indiana. Here in the room with me is uh, Jared Corals from our local Center for Independent Living as one of our key stakeholders. I know that Matt Norris uh, is on the line from Indiana University, the Indiana Institute for Disability and Community. Uh, one of our participant stakeholders is on the phone, Linda Muckway, as well as our transportation manager, Kevin Jeffers. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Alaska Mobility Coalition. Hi, this is uh, David Levy with the Alaska Mobility Coalition in Anchorage, and also on the line with us is uh, Casey Anderson uh, from Anchorage, and then Andy Nations, who's from Wasilla, and is the project consultant on this project. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Indian Nation Councils of Government. Um, yes, this is Reagan McManus, and I'm with um, NCOG Area Agents on Aging in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right, thank you. Uh, Columbia County Health and Human Services. Uh, I see they're on. Yep. Hello, Gretchen. Are you there? Yes, she is. Okay. All right. Gretchen says she's on. Good. She, she's uh, texting in her response. Uh, Mountain Empire Older Citizens. Nope. National Participant Network. 
Hi, this is Althea McLucky, and while the NPN is a national organization, we're focusing this project in Taos, New Mexico. Great, thank you. Marin County Transit District. Hi, this is Paul Branson and John Gaffney here in San Rafael, California. Great, thank you. Uh, Des Moines Area Metropolitan Planning Authority. Zach Young is on the call. Zach, can you hear us? <laughs> Zach, can you hear us? Zach, you are unmuted. You may speak. No. Zach, we know you're on the call. I hope you can hear us. And uh, the Ark of Connecticut. Be lovely on here. All right, that is the roll call. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, this is John Burkhardt again. I think we'd like to uh, go ahead with the presentation. Uh, thank you, everybody, who's on the call for joining us today. We're going to uh, go through the presentation uh, at the moment. We're going to have everybody's phones muted. We will pause at a, a number of times for, for questions, and, and I'm hoping that we will have a lot of uh, good uh, exchange today uh, on the ideas that, that, we're, that we're talking about. So, um, Ivy, if we could go to the next slide, please. This is, this is what we're going to do today. This is our agenda to, to talk about grant objectives, uh, to, to mention the transportation improvement process, to go through uh, a theory of change from, from a couple of, of different perspectives. Uh, we're, we're going to talk about performance measuring and, and monitoring and how to apply performance measures for your own local circumstances. Uh, we'll summarize the information and, and give you some contact information if, if you haven't seen it already for myself and, and for David Bernstein. So let's go to the next. Uh, those of us who uh, have, have joined us for previous presentations uh, know the story that uh, the, these are not the official ACL objectives, but, but they, they are of objectives that uh, we have put together as, as a result of your responses and, and your, uh, your presentations to date. So first of all, I, I think it's pretty obvious that, that what we're trying to do is, is become more inclusive in our transportation planning processes with specific emphasis here on uh, older adults and, and persons with disabilities. Uh, the programs that you're involved in, we, we expect will expand activities that, that include those people in coordinated transportation programs. Now for, the, for this demonstration program to, to be really successful and, and to do what ACL really needs and, and wants it to do, uh, we have to monitor and, and record activities and results and, and to share it during the project and, and after the, these planning demonstrations. And uh, the knowledge sharing network is, is going to be one of the key ways that, that this is done. So if we go to the transportation improvement process in the next slide, um, you, you all have seen this before, I'm sure, but <clears throat> it, it's important to, to put it down in, in writing, all of the stages. Um, starting where we are in the planning program would be an analysis of, of existing conditions. And, uh, you know, we, we call that by, by different names, but, but one has to find out what the needs are and, and what the resources are. And, Following that would
should be getting together, bringing stakeholders together, and especially older adults and people with disabilities for, for a joint determination of community goals, objectives, and, and evaluation strategies. Uh, this would be followed by figuring out what the working relationships are, are going to be in your local community to move forward with, with your specific goals and objectives. Uh, after that, there, there needs to be uh, an assessment of all of the options that you might use to move forward, and then an implementation, and, and then evaluation, which uh, goes back in a food in a feedback loop. Um, one of the things that's important to say here is, is that uh, everybody understands, I hope, that, that service changes are not going to be implemented everywhere and, and at all times in the next six months. It, it generally will take a, a whole lot longer than six months to get to the places that we want to get to eventually. But it is important to start the process with, with a real serious planning program. So in our next slide, we're going to look at what we call the, the theory of change. And, and we've worked at this from the uh, perspective of individuals and, and from organizations. And when we expand activities in coordinated transportation planning, we'd expect to see uh, the, the kinds of sequences that we're looking at here. And, and for individuals, uh, they, they would feel better about the transportation planning process. They would feel included. They would feel that, that their voices were being heard. Uh, a next stage, which, you know, is not necessarily a part of this six months, but hopefully later on, uh, there we would expect to see increased trip making, and this eventually, in in the long term, and you know this this may be years down the road, would be improved quality of life for the target populations that they were looking at. Uh, from an organizational perspective, the, the the kinds of changes that we're looking for would be improved operations in coordinated transportation planning. Now, this ought to then lead to improved coordinated system operations. So if we improve the planning first, we'll get to operations next, and, and then finally, sustainable improvements and, and changes in the systems that are used to deliver transportation services in your community. So at this point, I'd, I'd like to stop and, and ask if, if there are any questions about what you've seen bef as in, in what we've done so far. Any questions? Well, if not, I'd like to turn it over to David Bernstein uh, for the presentation of, of the next set of slides. We're now up to slide six, and I'd like to ask if uh, Susan Jenkins, did you, you wanted to uh, perhaps make a few comments earlier? This would be a good breaking point since we're about to describe the difference between performance measurement and evaluation. I was wondering if you have any comments at this point. Thank you, David. Um, no, I don't have any comments at this point. I'm just really happy to see how the project has moved forward and the direction that you all have taken with it. Thank you, though. Terrific. Thank you. Well, folks, we're now on slide six, and I'd like to just talk a little bit about the difference <coughs> between performance measurement and monitoring versus evaluation. Um, let's first talk about performance measurement and monitoring. Typically, what we're talking about is periodic but regular monitoring of programs and then reporting of program accomplishments, particularly progress towards pre-established goals. And typically the way this works is we have measures of the activities being conducted, 
the immediate results from those activities, what got produced, and then usually short, intermediate, and longer term measures to monitor progress. Performance measurement is particularly useful at answering questions of what and how much of something is happening. Evaluation, on the other hand, is a little bit broader. Typically, evaluation is more in-depth, and it helps explain all of those why questions, why program performance did or, not, uh, did, or did not change. Uh, were the changes being seen in the performance measures specifically related to the program as it was implemented, or were there other issues going on? What it does is it helps attribute performance measures to program results so that we know when we're monitoring what's going on out there in our community, we have a sense of whether and to what extent the program actually influenced that. For the first year of our Inclusive Coordinated Transportation Project, what we are doing is performance monitoring, not evaluation. In other words, we have six months to collect some information to show the impact of your planning process. Uh, some of the processes you are putting in place will take a much longer time to start to see those results, as John pointed out in discussing the theory of change. What that means is, for now, what we're really doing is monitoring to make sure that the activities are being implemented and to see what the products are that are produced from those activities and then see what our results are. Next slide, please. There are different types of performance measures, and you're going to see some of these on your monthly scorecard when you get them in the next day or two. Uh, the inputs are the measures of resources that are applied to providing the services, and you all know what that is. In this particular case, we have the small grants that you have received and been awarded on. We congratulate you once again for that. Uh, in addition, you may have resources such as volunteers or your own organization's resources that you're dedicating to this project. And in some selective cases, some of you have other grant activity that you're conducting, perhaps to apply what you're doing in the community you were awarded this grant for to other nearby communities. An activity, our activities or measures of activities are measures of the services that are being provided. So if you said for this inclusive coordinated transportation project that you're going to conduct focus groups, you're going to do a survey, you're going to have a community meeting, you're going to produce a resource guide, you're going to have an advisory committee uh, that includes people with disabilities and older adults, all of those are what we call activities. And the number of those things that you do are also activities. They could be considered outputs, but for the most part, if you said we're going to have three focus groups, we would consider the conduct of the three focus groups to be the activity. Outputs are measures of the quantity of services provided or the quantity of a service meeting a quality requirement. The focus of the ICT grant is on inclusive coordinated transportation and the extent to which we are involving people with disabilities and older adults in the planning process. Therefore, what you'll see is a lot of the outputs that you all will be measuring are related to the extent to which people with disabilities and older adults are uh, participating in that inclusive process. Outcomes. Outcomes are measures that address short-term, intermediate, or long-term results of a program or process on condition for those receiving a service. Now, some of you stated in your applications that a desirable outcome would be to increase ridership on public transportation for the target audience. Uh, in the discussions we've had over the last two weeks or so, uh, most of you, I think, have come to the realization that seeing those increases in ridership are desirable, but probably closer to an intermediate or long-term result. In one case, there was one grantee who said, no, we really think we're going to see increased ridership during the six-month period, and uh, that's an outcome that would therefore uh, meet the definition of short-term. For the purposes of this project, consider short-term to be 
something that would occur that can be measured during the six months. Intermediate or long-term results would be something that would happen in the follow-up period. Next slide, please. So let's take a look at our conceptual framework hypothesis that more involvement leads to better results. And what we're really doing here is simply applying the definitions we just discussed to this particular project, not any one grantee uh, project, but all of the projects collectively. So the inputs are the resources from the demonstration program and those resources that you grantees would be applying. The activities are the increased involvement of target groups in coordinated transportation planning. You may be doing a lot of other activities concurrently, but the activities we are most interested in is the extent and meaningfulness of the involvement of people with disabilities and older adults in the transportation planning process. The outputs are the immediate products of activities so, for example, the number of target group uh, members that are involved or the number of process improvements that have been identified, something that you can link directly to the, the processes you're conducting. It might be the number of uh, barriers that have been identified in your transportation process, and particularly those barriers that have been identified by people with disabilities and older adults. That would be another example. The outcomes are the changed conditions, services, or processes resulting from grant activities and outputs. Earlier on, we said that this is not an evaluation. That makes it more difficult to link your results back to your project. Nonetheless, we want to try to measure those outcomes that can be linked to the activities that you're doing as part of this process. So what are the outcomes for persons involved in transportation planning? What are the outcomes for transportation users, which presumably includes those that are involved extensively in the transportation planning process? And finally, what are the results for transportation planners and other stakeholders, service providers and others that are involved? Now, you'll notice at the bottom of the slide we have something we're calling mitigating factors. Somewhere in this process, some things may happen that might interfere with that rather linear pro, uh, projection from inputs to activities to outputs and outcomes. We would call those mitigating factors. They're factors outside of the grant that might affect your outcomes. Typically, those are the sorts of things we would look at in a much more comprehensive program evaluation of what you're doing, but it is also good to be aware of what some of those mitigating factors are as you're moving forward. For example, if you were counting on the involvement of a particular stakeholder and that stakeholder was not able to be involved, that might be a mitigating factor that might interfere with your ability to get to the outcomes you hope to with your project. Let's talk a little bit about what some of the purposes are for performance monitoring, because something Eric said earlier in his introduction is very important, and that is that you feel like you've been involved in the process of selecting the, the outputs and outcomes that you'll be measuring for your project. The reason, as I explained to some of you in our consulting calls, that that is important is the research on performance measurement has shown that the greater the extent of involvement of the people that are doing the measuring, the more uses of those performance measures that they see, the greater the likelihood that the outcome measurement process is going to be useful for all parties involved. So let's talk a little bit about what some of these uses are. Uh, first of all, monitoring the grant processes for continuous improvement. By monitoring your activities, your outputs, and your outcomes, you can notice where there might be shortfalls in the process that would call attention to particular processes that might need improvement. If you do that on an ongoing basis, as is implied with ongoing performance measurement, you can use that information to improve those processes uh, and continue progress towards your stated goals. Assisting grantees with measuring activities and results. This is the most obvious thing, is to allow you to collect the information that you would likely want to collect anyways to know if, whether what you're doing is making a difference or not. 
uh, to provide grantees with data for local improvements and in future inclusive transportation competitions. As you all know, the out years for this project will involve narrowing the number of grantees who will be getting grants to continue with the work. Having performance measures in place with which to document your progress during the six month demonstration project will assist you in completing the application for out year grants when that process begins. Uh, back again to uh, providing data for continuous improvement, both for our overall project as well as for your grant processes. And then finally, to report on the demonstration program and other project activities. At the end of this six-month process, we have to produce a report for the Administration for Community Living, and the information that you provide to us will be used to report on overall progress for this aspect of the project. Let's talk a little bit about what some of the sample grantee objectives might be. We're now on slide 10. The short-term objectives, uh, establishing structures for more inclusive transportation planning processes. That leads to some of the activities that you said that you would be doing. Documenting the need for transportation services, especially as articulated by your target groups. I would say almost without question, every single grantee is doing something to collect information from the target groups in order to continue to uh, provide information and feedback on the planning of transportation services. Uh, let's talk a little bit about assessing current planning efforts to produce more responsive future planning processes. What we hope is that the inclusive process is going to continue beyond the current project. With that hope in mind, the kind of data that you're collecting during this process and the formats and performance measures that you use will be useful for the out-year aspects of your project. And then finally, to implement more inclusive transportation plans, nearly all of you were trying to get someplace. That's what the purpose of the, of the outcomes is and having a sense of the progress towards those long-term goals is something that you can accomplish with your short-term objectives. In the long run, what we hope is that your activities now during this six months will lead to improved transportation services and eventually increased ridership and service, uh, and especially quality ridership uh, for people with disabilities and older adults. Next slide, please. Some of you may have heard the term logic model used before. We also use the term program outcome model. And you see at the top of slide 11 your typical program outcome model approach. Now, one thing I want to say is sort of a disclaimer. Uh, we always wish that the world was as linear as our ability to present it as linear. Unfortunately, we do understand the world is not quite that linear, which is one of the reasons that we um, indicated that there might be mitigating factors that would affect what you're doing. The other thing that you're not seeing in this particular uh, model, and what I was indicating is that the model that's at the top of the screen, uh, that is uh, very, very commonly used in presentations about logic modeling or program outcome modeling, uh, what it attempts to do is relate the inputs you're receiving to the activities, those things you're spending your resources on, to the outputs that are then produced and then the outcomes that result from that process. And what I was saying before we lost our connection was that this process is not quite as linear as it would appear. There's two things that are missing from this particular model when it's presented as a simple linear model. The first thing that's missing is those mitigating factors we talked about on slide eight that can interfere with the successful completion of outcomes as you make progress toward your, pro toward your project goals. Uh, there are factors that might come into play, such as a major stakeholder who's not able to participate, a key volunteer who is not able to be involved, all of these can potentially cause problems that interfere with the achievement of your outcomes 
and you'll notice our simple model doesn't have a place for those mitigating factors. The other thing you're not noticing here is a feedback loop. You'll recall that I mentioned that one of the purposes of doing performance monitoring is for continuous improvement. Continuous improvement means that someone has to pick up the reports that are being generated and use those performance measures to both monitor what's going on, use those performance measures to make decisions, and use those performance measures to report to those that are interested in your project. And you'll see there's no feedback loop built into this model. It's the invisible little icon that's not there. Trust me, <laughs> it's important, and we want you focused on using performance measures and using the information to feed back to your process for continuous improvement. What you see in the boxes down below on slide 11 are some examples of inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes. So for resources, money, the number of staff, staff time, and the number of volunteers, and the kinds of planning projects that you all are working on. The activities, what will the program do? Well, there you see listed a quick summary of what most of you are doing with the ICT project dollars. You're conducting focus groups. You're doing surveys. You're doing community forums. You're reconvening or convening planning committees in which people with disabilities and older adults are involved as members and hopefully taking an active role in participation. And many of you are reviewing existing transit plans or conducting this process to get transit planning going. Some of you, a pretty good handful of you, are using this funding to establish uh, a mobility management system or hire a mobility manager uh, to serve your community. So what are some of the direct that would result from some of these activities? First of all, the number of stakeholders in your focus groups. It sounds really simple, but remember, we're not participating with you. So one of the things we really want is how many stakeholders were actively involved in your focus groups? How many people with disabilities, how many older adults, and how many partnering organizations or family members representing your target population were involved in focus groups? How many surveys did you distribute? This is all evidence that the activities that you said you were going to do are, in fact, ongoing. Uh, number of recommended improvements generated. Again, the whole purpose of this is to lead to the generation of improvements in the transportation planning process. It would be useful to know how many recommendations resulted from the processes that you have in place. And then finally, what changes as a result of this? The fourth box underneath outcomes. The number of stakeholders on your planning committee is an important outcome. We want to show the extent of the involvement of the stakeholders. How many transit improvements actually got vetted or implemented? In other words, your stakeholders are going to generate suggestions for improvements in the transportation planning process. How many of those improvements went forward, got vetted, and how many, if you can measure it six months, actually got implemented? And then finally, in the long term, how many more riders will be able to take advantage of transportation systems? Uh, one reminder, please, if you were trying to mute your phones from our end, if you would all mute your phone until you have a question, we would appreciate it. Um, This is a more specific example of how a single individual activity looks in a program outcome model. In this case, the activity is focus groups. So what we want to know is what are the direct products of these activities? They would be things like the number of stakeholders involved in the focus groups, the number of recommended improvements generated. You will notice we don't have listed the number of focus groups that you conduct. That is really a measure of the activity itself, not so much an output that results from it. Although it is important, if you say you're stuck by that when it comes time for reporting, you let us know on a monthly basis how many focus groups you actually conducted. At this point, I'm going to pause and ask if anyone has any questions, and we are going to ask you to use the feature that allows you to raise your hand 
that we can call on you to ask any questions that you might have. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Okay. There are no hands raised, so we're going to proceed with the presentation. We're going to go to slide 13, and we've asked uh, the folks at uh, in Portland, Oregon, with Ride Connection, to provide an example of what they're doing. And in introducing this, let me just state that their, their program is unique, as all of your programs are, but they've already put in the format of one of these outcome logic models. So we'd like to invite Ross Peterson to please uh, step to the microphone and talk us through slides 13, 14, and 15. Ross. Thanks, David. So before I get into the part of the, the outcomes model that matches what David just showed you, I wanted to talk about some context and place the um, outcomes model that we put together within the context of our project. And I, I found a template for putting together an outcomes or logic model, whatever you want to call it, online that had a couple of extra fields that allowed you to put in your project goal, talk about your objectives, and describe some of your rationale. And I found, found that to be very helpful because it it um, allowed me to kind of go above and beyond what was listed in the, the four steps that are in the typical outcomes model and give readers a better idea of how the different aspects of the project work together. So the first slide you're seeing here matches the top part of the Excel spreadsheet that David and John have loaded or will be loading onto the project website. Um, and this just describes our goal. It describes how we're getting there. And our objectives, if you read through them, are very nicely aligned with the ACL objectives of inclusion and participation. And then this last little bit, I'm not going to read any of this, but this last little bit, I want to focus on the first sentence here that talks about how transportation can be used as a tool to improve health outcomes. So this is where we start seeing how that all of that outcomes language that David was just talking about fits into the next couple of slides. So our, our hope on this project and our expectation is that we can use transportation not only to improve um, trips and transportation specific outcomes, but we're, we expect to also use transportation as a tool to improve health outcomes. And so the logic model you'll see next explains how we get there. So nothing new here from what you saw before. Up on the left, we've got our inputs. Inputs become activities, the first of which is a human subjects review, an IRB, establishment of an advisory committee. We'll be doing a literature review to understand what is currently known about the connection between transportation and health outcomes, and we've, we've got a pretty good basis for that already. That will flow into some workshops, some focus groups, data analysis, and then eventually uh, documentation activities. And the outputs are these measurable things you see here on the kind of in the middle of your screen. I'm not going to go through every one of these, but um, you, can, you can see what we'll be measuring. I divided these. This isn't necessary, and this isn't something that I, I think you have to do, but I found it helpful to talk about measurable outputs and then a category of material outputs. So we'll also be producing a report, we'll be producing recommendations, and we'll produce several presentations that we take around to different um, entities. And then at the very end, all of this will flow into a pilot project. I just want to note that that pilot project is funded separately from this ACL-funded project and it, it will be done outside of the six months. The objective of all of these outputs is to influence these short-term outcomes. Now, I haven't shown you on this slide the long-term or the intermediate outcomes, but I want to draw your attention to um, these two rows. I have transportation outcomes, and then below that I have health outcomes. So in the short term, all that we expect to happen is we can change our service, our, our service criteria at Ride Connection. 
we hope to be able to increase transportation in several very specific targeted areas. We aspire to, and we're not sure, this is why this column is preliminary, we're not sure if we'll be able to influence any MT policies on the Medicaid side, but we would like to. And we would certainly also like to influence the interagency coordination policies that currently exist. And then down below, if we can, we'd like to also make recommendations for local clinics that we're working with to change their policies as well. So those are the short-term short outcomes. Long-term and intermediate, what we're hoping is that the short-term policy changes lead to things like decreases in late cancellations or decreases in no-shows. We have a, a high trip denial rate, and if we can reduce the amount of late cancels and no-shows, we think we can also reduce our, our trip denial rate. But down below, we think that by increasing transportation, we can improve customer satisfaction in terms of their health. We think we can help the dialysis clinic that we're working with improve their turnover, maybe decrease post-treatment complications. Um, a lot of this is preliminary because we think, we're not sure if these are long-term or short or intermediate because some of these things like decreasing emergency room visits may very well be long-term outcomes. Um, and this is where one of the feedback loops comes into our, our model. David talked about this a lot. As we do our literature review, we're going to find out what other researchers have identified about the relationship between transportation and some of these outcomes, and that will inform where we're putting things in this matrix. Some things may get moved to longer-term outcomes, um, and these relationships will be better refined as we move forward. I think that's everything I wanted to present. I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Ross, uh, that was uh, re really a great presentation. Uh, I know that there are a number of other programs that, that are looking at similar kinds of models for, for their outcomes, but, uh, you know, we had seen what Ride Connection is doing here and uh, wanted to share that in. So uh, let's, let's go and proceed to the next slide. Did Colette have a question there? Yeah, please. Colette, go ahead. Colette's question was, can you tell us what the online tool is? I might need some clarifi clarification on that, Colette. The logic model framework that you were using that had the goals, objectives, and uh, measures, uh, Ross. So when David and I talked, um, he mentioned that he could post our spreadsheet on the ACL website for the for the uh, including more than an Excel spreadsheet. And you're welcome to um, copy and use and plagiarize all you want, at least of our stuff. What we'll do is when we upload the PowerPoint presentation recording of this webinar, we'll make sure to include the, the Excel spreadsheet at the same time, and that will be uh, on, on the Transit Planning for All website, and we will all notice when it's up that it's out there. One other, a uh, couple other resources, if you want to use Google or whatever search engine you have, if you Google Kellogg Foundation, K-E-L-L-O-G Foundation Logic Model. You'll see that the Kellogg Foundation has some terrific free resources that you can uh, make use of. Uh, the other thing, some of you have, may have worked with the United Way in the past. The United Way's got a pretty good resource manual on doing lots of outcome modeling because they started requiring it of their grantees about 10 or 12 years ago, a bit more than that. So those are two other resources that might be useful to you, and uh, that can help get you started in this process. A third resource that you're going to have within the next couple of days is the uh, the project monitoring scorecard that you're going to be filling out monthly, and you'll see that that can also be a useful tool for you as you try to relate the activities you've proposed to the outputs and outcomes that uh, you hope to produce. 
Are there any other questions at this point? Toss it back to John Burkhardt. Thank you, David. Uh, we want to look at slide 16 now. Um, we're talking about uh, monitoring strategies and activities for, for this particular planning project uh, between now and, and uh, the end of November. Uh, uh, we want to work with you, and, and we'll, we'll be monitoring activities. Uh, you will be monitoring activities, and, and we'll be looking at what you're doing on, on a monthly basis. The uh, first uh, reports are going to be due uh, July 15th. Uh, as David said, you'll be getting uh, that documentation in the next several days. Um, we, we want to work together to, to help in the monitoring process of activities, outputs, and, and outcomes. Uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do is, uh, to the extent possible, document increases in the numbers of consumers involved, and, and that is in all parts of the process. Um, see how those increases in consumer involvement lead to or affect in some way uh, coordinated transportation decision-making in your community. And it might be a small effect, uh, but that it's still observable in, in one way or another. Um, and, and we'll be providing information uh, back to you so that there's what we call a continuous improvement cycle uh, for everybody involved in the program. Because what we want to do is, is help everybody succeed to the largest extent possible. So, uh, next slide. Uh, the, the, there are really uh, several important decisions uh, that, that are, are important in, in the program, and we, which is why we want to help you get started with performance measurement uh, from, from the very beginning. Um, so, you have to look at which, which data will be collected and, and when. Who's collecting data? How will it be collected? And how will it? Now, when when we talk to you about uh, these kinds of goals and activities that you're involved in, we'll also want to talk a bit about the quality of the data because you want to uh, get information that, that you can really rely on for the decisions that, that you need. Um, now, next slide. Uh, I need the next slide talks about um, the possibilities of surveys. Now, you know, we, we're, we're not suggesting that everybody has to do surveys. We're not suggesting that everybody has to do surveys of specific types. But uh, these are the kinds of things that, that we've seen uh, in, in your write-ups. Uh, surveys are, can be useful for needs analysis, uh, looking at customer satisfaction, and either perspectives. You know, uh, uh, among other things, uh, um, the needs analysis, uh, people can ask stakeholders, especially riders or individuals who might be riders of transportation services but, but are not riders right at the moment uh, about their needs. Where do they need to go? When do they need to go? What kinds of assistance do they need to get any assistance? And, and those kinds of questions are, are useful to get at uh, with, with surveys. While we're doing that, uh, let's look at uh, customer satisfaction. And uh, this is one of the things that, that we hope people will be able to do a little bit of measurement, whether survey or not survey, uh, by, by the end of uh, this particular six month planning process. So, um, in one way or another, whether it's focus 
focus groups or survey meetings. Another thing, people want to feel that their voices have been heard. And that's the kind of thing that we expect that uh, you'll be interested in when, when you look at customer satisfaction. And then uh, surveys can also be useful to find perspectives of, of your partners, of, of the service providers. And uh, there are other ways to do this. There are individual interviews. There are focus groups. And there are larger community meetings. But uh, a number of communities have surveys effectively and if do that, um, and to go ahead, and and we can help you out with that. In in the end, we we want to know so that we can report to ACL, and ACL report to uh, Congress and anybody else who's interested. Um, what what you plan to do, and and what you actually did, and what did we get as a result? Uh, the the long-term objective is to have activities that, that can be replicated far beyond our, our 17 communities and, and help everybody else uh, across the country. So, uh, successful demonstrations. Uh, you, we, we're hoping that everybody can accomplish the goals that they have set for, for their own community. Uh, we, we certainly would like to document that participation of persons with disabilities and older adults really happened, uh, even for the small amount of uh, funding that, that you have received. Um, the local transportation might not actually have improved as, as a result of this six-month planning process, but uh, we hope that, that you'll be confident that this is going to happen some way down the road in, in your own community. And now we're looking at more long-term outcomes, improvements to mobility and, and quality of life of persons with disabilities and, and older adults. And, and then, of course, uh, sustainable methods. Uh, you know, this is a short-term process, only six months. But uh, we will hope that these changes can be sustained and and even uh, influenced in in ways that uh, allow us to continue allow you to continue to get to some of the long term objectives even after the grant period has ended. So we've we've got uh, one some slide. Next, on uh, performance improvements, but uh, we, we want to give, give you a summary, and, and uh, David is going to talk about next steps, and, and we're going to open it one more time for, for uh, everybody's questions. So, um, performance measurement, uh, you know, what, why do it? There, there, there are lots, lots and lots of, of reasons, but, you know, first of all, we, we want valid data and, and replicable analyses, and, and that's what we want to help you with so that you can make the decisions that you need to in, in your own community to uh, support your day-to-day -day program management and, and operations. And you see there on the slide there are a couple examples of decisions that could be made uh, do you expand the program? Do you contract the program? Do you, do you leave it as it is? Uh, do you continue in the, previ in the previous directions, or, or do you change? Um, again, all of this is to help you measure progress towards your own goals and objectives, and it's supposed to indicate potential service and program uh, improvement. The uh, Information that you fill out will, will also help assure ACL that, that uh, you're spending their money and uh, your tax dollars in, in the way that uh, that we all hope will 
lead to improvements and support the continuation of, of this really valuable program. If, if we do good stuff here in, in the next six months, we, we can make real changes to, to the way that uh, community transportation is planned. And, and that's, that's really what we're hoping for in the long run. Um, so, David, do you want to talk about what people can expect next in, in terms of hearing from us and their liaisons? Thank you, John. In the next couple of days, we are going to be uh, communicating with your project liaisons and providing them with the monthly scorecard that you will use to complete information about your project on a monthly basis. This is in addition to the financial monthly reports that you either have gotten or will be getting shortly. What you're going to notice is that we pre-populated some of the fields with information about your project. That was based on a couple of things. One, the application that you submitted. Uh, two, the conversation we had. And I want to tell you, having talked to all 17 of your programs, just how impressive it is uh, what you're doing, your commitment to including people with disabilities and older adults in the transportation planning process, and what you've gotten up and running in such a short period of time. We are very, very impressed with that. What you will see among the forms are the activities list based on what was in your application. It's a very brief, bulleted list, uh, and you will have instructions on how to go ahead and modify that list to report on the activities that you conducted during the month of June. You will see that your outputs, outcomes, and customer satisfaction measures have been pre-filled. What that means is based on our conversation, and there should be very few surprises because we tried to let you know what we thought we were hearing from you during the discussion about the kinds of outputs and outcomes that you all had identified we also, though, at the same time, we're trying to be consistent. If there were a couple of grantees that were doing very, very similar activities, we wanted to try as best we could to reflect that with the wording of the outputs and outcomes. So stay tuned. You will be getting from your liaisons that pre-filled scorecard for the June reporting period and you will have instructions both for how to complete the scorecard as well as specific to the process of filling the scorecard out for the months of June and July. If you have any questions about any of that, the person to contact would be your project liaison. Feel free to copy us on that email, and we will work with your project liaison to get the answers to the questions that you need. At this point, we want to pause again to see if anyone has any questions. We're fairly close to our end time. Are there any questions about anything that we've discussed today or our next steps? Your phones are now unmuted. The next slide, please. If you have any questions at this time, we'd be happy to take them. Please go ahead. Okay, so I'm hoping that, that everybody understands in, in the next couple of days uh, you'll be receiving information and uh, those scorecards uh, need to be filled out and returned to your project liaison by July 15th. And that is a report up for the month of June. And uh, all of the project team is going to be looking at this very, very closely. Uh, if, if there are things that, that uh, you find that, that you want to change, um, we can change it once. But a after the month of July is over, uh, we, we would hope that uh, everybody would be consistent with, with what they've said to date and, and focus on the goals and objectives 
the, that you have put together in your proposal and, and that we have refined and, and negotiated with everyone. So um, I'd, I'd like to ask again if uh, anybody else has any other questions about the process. Any members of the project have any comments that they make at this time? This is, this is Roberta Habowski in Michigan. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Roberta. Hi. I was just wondering if the, the last seminar has been posted um, and when this one would be available and if you could send a link to where those are. Hi, Roberta. I'll, I'll, this is Charlie. I'll take that question. Uh, we have gotten the recording back from the last seminar. Uh, it has not been posted yet. We'll get that up uh, tomorrow, I hope. Okay. Thank you. And, and I'll send out the link to everybody. And Thank we'll you. try as quickly as possible to get this one posted. I know some of you may want to see the PowerPoint again uh, in order right. to be thinking through what you're going to be reporting on. Uh, trust me, you're going to have a very graphic set of instructions, very detailed set of instructions for completing your monthly scorecard. I, I, I'm hoping there are few, if any, questions. Of course, if there are, please do feel free to contact your liaison, and all the liaisons are communicating with the rest of the team so that if a problem comes up that might affect many of you, we can address it and send out information on that. We will also uh, send you a link uh, to the um, presentation that you saw today and the recording complete with some background noise for the first three quarters of it, <laughs> which we can apologize for. The link will probably be in close proximity to wherever the first uh, webinar information is going to be uploaded, and Charlie's nodding his head. We want you all to get used to using Transit Planning for All as a resource, and for that reason, that's going to be the go-to place for webinars such as this. Project team members, anybody else have any comments? Anybody from ACL? Anything you would like to contribute at this point? This is not, Susan like, Jenkins from not, ACL, and I just had a comment. I wanted to thank everyone for their hard work, and um, I think I can speak on behalf of Eric Weekly and myself. I'm in the Office of Performance and Evaluation at ACL, we really appreciate how seriously you take the work that you do and the measurement of that work. So thank you all. Thank you, Susan. Appreciate that. Anybody else for the good of the order? I just want to note that we finished 10 minutes early. So we do appreciate your participation in today's call and Please do feel free to get in touch with your project liaison if you have any other questions. Feel free to copy John and me if those questions relate to performance measurement and evaluation. We'll coordinate the response with your project liaison. Okay. Charlie. Sure. Thanks, everybody, for being on the call today. Like uh, John and David said, uh, you'll be getting these scorecards this week. Uh, and just give us a call if you have any questions once you get them. Thanks, everyone. Call or email. Thank well, you, everybody. Thanks, we're, everybody. We're going to terminate the call now. This is your last chance to jump in. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.